Okay, so this is it. Welcome everyone. Uh, this is the long awaited marathon Chinese course that we've been waiting for. So we call it a marathon because we know we're going to be running. Okay, but as with a marathon, we just don't sprint in and there we hope that this crash course will propel you to continue up on this journey of learning Chinese. It's passion that led us here. So welcome everyone. Uh, we're going to have lots of fun and we're going to keep it light and up it if you have any question this is what i want to say if you have any questions silly difficult simple please feel free to ask in the group uh that's the encouragement that you have for everyone whatever time it is you feel that you want to ask a question about chinese please do so so okay what is it that we can expect from this course all right we're gonna get lots of money we're gonna do all traveling to exotic places we're gonna meet new friends <laughs> i just made that up okay but on a serious note we're gonna do basic dialogues in chinese all right so you, by the end of this course you're aiming that each and every one of us uh those who are starting from fresh those who have been uh in contact with chinese for quite some time but not really able to hold basic dialogues we want to push you after that greeting because most of us, and I know I'm speaking for myself, I spent a lot of time just being able to say ni hao or uh, hen hao and I wouldn't really go past that and maybe ni jiao so means what's your name <laughs> and that was the end of it but we want to push our um, proficiency a little bit further than just being able to hold a basic uh, greeting dialogue but also Ask somebody where they're from, how long have they been in your country, what they're doing, what their business, where they're going, where they're from, and other questions in between, right? So we're going to be doing that in this course. And we, we also want to teach you this very important uh, tool, and, and we're going to show you how we're going to do it even in this very introduction video. Being able to come up with phrases from your vocabulary bank, okay? So when you're learning these words, you know these words, you know the word for tree. You know the word for climb, but you can't piece them together. You want to say to somebody, can you climb a tree? Can you swim? You know the word for swim, but you really can't understand or really coin those phrases and come up with uh, sentences on the fly unless you're reading. <laughs> so we're going to be able to see how we could do that. Uh, just piecing up words from our vocabulary and come up with original phrases of our own. And this is a very important skill, especially when you're commenting uh, during a meeting portion, right? Uh, you want to be able to express yourself using your own words so you can pick one word from the paragraph being read and then another word from your vocabulary and mix them together and make a beautiful fusion i tell you uh it's like a cocktail <laughs> okay and we're also going to touch on a little bit on grammar points uh chinese is with any other language they have their own rules or syntax if they want if you want to put it that way so we're going to touch on that but we won't go deeper because really we're not you know native chinese but the basic one the basic grammar point that they can say oh yeah you actually speak good chinese mm, nice we're going to do that in this course okay so we're going to start with the basics all right uh, and 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 we keep saying that because we know we have people who are uh, a little bit higher on their proficiency Chinese and who are also among us um, their duty will be spectating us learn right <laughs> and they'll also be referring me if, because the, if either of us made a mistake I'm sure they will be happy to point that out for us because all of us are continuing to learn even I am still learning so don't expect per perfection for me <laughs> so but the good thing is we, are, we have people who are more proficient even than I am in the group so it's a blessing to have them with us so that we don't learn and teach us the poison. <laughs> we share beautiful stuff. Okay, good. And we will also teach you this other skill that you can continue learning with our supervision. All right. So after this course, if you want to go into another class, but we, we it's fine to continue up with other classes. That's fine. But if you want to do solo learning, uh, learning with our supervision, we will try and show you how you can do that. Right. So that's the first thing we want to touch on. But is Chinese really that hard? Because that's the most important question. And that's a question that's a burden in everyone's mind. You know, and think about learning Chinese. The first thing that comes to your mind is, oh, <laughs> that's Mount Everest. How do I even start climbing that? Okay, so we're going to blow out that myth today. And we're not doing it just because we want to encourage you. Of course, we want to encourage you. <laughs> but we're also doing that because there are some parts of Chinese that really are easy than other languages, I'm telling you. For example, if you want to touch on tenses, all right? In English, and, and, and this is what we're going to do, we're going to do English versus Chinese. We're going to do two battles, English versus Chinese, all right? And 
we're gonna do two battles again. Spanish versus Chinese. Okay, so we'll start with English here, and we're talking about tenses. A verb like go can be expressed as gone, going, went, depending on what time it happened, right? The same with speak, spoken, speaking, spoke, right? But in Chinese, your verb will never change. If you want to say go, chu, if you want to use chu as go, it will stay the same. You can add eight other markers like le, chu le, or chu gu, uh, to determine what, what time or what other, to try to express it in a way that will give a bit of a hint as whether this had happened already or this is a regular thing. But otherwise, your context will tell you whether this happened in the past or is happening or will happen in the future. But the verb itself, to, will stay the same. To yesterday, to today, to tomorrow. Okay? So I'm going, I went, I go to, will always be what to, what to, what to, and you can add the marker that you want. So here, Chinese is simpler, right? This is it is really cuts off the whole weight of learning tenses and present participles and a whole other bunch of stuff in between there. And when it comes to articles, the a these we have them in English, don't we? The man, a boy, a ball, an apple, right? <laughs> if you say a apple, that's grammatically incorrect. <laughs> That's too long to say. People will laugh at you, right? I know people will laugh at you, but to say grammatically incorrect is too long for us to say. Let's just go with people will laugh at you, right? An honest man. It's an H, but it sounds like it. Also, you now have to use the N, right? In Chinese, good news is you don't have to use D and A. If it's a man, you just go man. Boy, boy. No need to put the articles like the A, N. So again, Chinese is easier in this regard, right? It saves us a lot, a lot of trouble. And now let's do Spanish versus Chinese. I was, I'm in a Chinese, I'm in a Spanish class right now. I'm very, very, very early days in my Spanish class and I'm struggling. I don't want to lie to you. And recently I was doing colors and I learned that some of the colors are actually male and some of them are female. <laughs> like a masculine markers in there. In Chinese, there are no gender specific products, no masculine, no feminine, no neutral words, right? So, this says it's a whole lot of trouble if you want to express yourself. The word will stay the same. In Spanish, the verb or expressions also change depending on context. I was learning about tango, tiene, tienes. In Chinese, each verb only has one form, and there are no irregular verbs. So again, it's kind of a whole other, 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 other bunch of thought that we could really ambush down when it comes to learning Chinese. So these three, four points that we just mentioned above are actually good news, right? They're really good news. It's just kind of gave us an air going and spit on to say, okay, we can learn Chinese. But what about the characters? <laughs> the characters are what people run away from the most. And good news, we're not going to focus on characters in this course. <laughs> but, um, not because you are scared of them, of course you are scared of them, <laughs> but we still, another, on another note though, um, here is what we're going to do, we're just taking this portion as an introduction to Chinese characters, alright? These Chinese characters, some of them are built from pictorial backgrounds, alright? So if there's a picture, let's say of grass, you see that picture of grass in tea leaves, you see that picture of grass in vegetables, you see that picture of grass in anything that is linked to plants right if if there's something that is to do with food you see that little thing that little rendition or character that represents food you see if it's in say a metal you see that in, in in when you're looking at the character for silver when you look at the character for gold when you look at the character for something that is iron in it so you see that metal kind of character popping up so these are called radicals, they're like permanent pictorial background of a character, and they are called the Chinese building, uh, character building blocks. When you match these, there's about 200 or 214 of, the, of these, and they, are, they make uh, thousands of characters. <laughs> and if you master them, you can actually have fun learning these Chinese characters. But that's not all. There's also something called pinyin, and you might have heard of this. For example, um, the character that you see on the screen there, which looks like a, an arrow pointing upwards. 
and then underlined that one is called bu it's actually a word it means no or not if you or it can be used as a negative prefix right or don't bu so that bu the part the way that we're saying that it's bu and it's falling it's forceful that bu part that marker is what they call pinyin so instead of looking at chinese characters you can simply look at the pinyin and ignore the character and say exactly what you want to say in the right tone ain't that good news <laughs> that's really good news for me i can go with pinyin i can live with pinyin all my life without even looking at a chinese character okay so pinyin is a pinyin is a system that was developed somewhere back in 1958 just to give you a bit the background and and then because the chinese realized that it was difficult for everyone to you know learn the chinese language yeah but also remember there is that version of traditional Chinese characters which is very difficult to master and there is the simplified version which you know which is very learnable so if you want to devote some time to learning Chinese characters I urge you to consider going with the simplified Chinese characters and these are the most popular ones and we use them as well in the organization and all the literature where well, most of the literature that comes from to, uh, to other countries that are not native uh usually will have uh, simplified chinese but some other people prefer the traditional one and those ones can also be ordered you know the organization will force it to use simplified or traditional but the pronunciation will stay the same the only the character will be different so yeah that's good news and then there are also other axes like i was telling you just above when you look at the character boo you saw there was a little bit marker that shows okay this one is falling so you go boo you no longer go boo or boo right so those accents, those are reading tones, and some people are really scared of Chinese tones. <laughs> and it's for a good reason why they're scared. They're not really scared, they're being cautious, because in English, if you say go, go, or go, it will still mean the same thing, you have to go, right? Unless maybe you're watching a football game and <laughs> they say, and you pass it to an audience, a go! <laughs> That's a different go, right? But you get the point. Go in Chinese will stay will not be the same as it stays in English, right? If you say go, 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 that will change the meaning. So people are really cautious when it comes to tones, and you should be as well. But you shouldn't worry about them, you shouldn't be scared about them. Why? Because more often than not, these tones somewhat come naturally. <laughs> so the more you speak, the more you practice, you start getting the hang of them, uh, eventually so don't really make a fast on tones in the early days of your learning chinese um and don't be disappointed if your tones are not coming out right you're going to get a lot of people correcting you especially the chinese want to correct you because the, i mean it's, it means a lot to them but to us it won't mean much so we're not really worried <laughs> because because our vocabulary will be limited for the most time so it's most likely that whatever tone you say we will know what you mean because you, we are on the same in the same bracket but to those who are native their vocabulary is, you know, rich and, and every word you say and every accent you use, they will have to consult their millions of uh, characters and connections and see what exactly are you trying to mean. So they will correct you and don't feel disappointed when that happens, right? And finally, on Chinese characters, we want to touch on the writing style. Uh, writing, I, I've been learning Chinese for quite some time myself, and uh, to be honest with you, I don't really write Chinese characters much often unless I want to write a letter to them physically where I feel that it might touch their hearts to see hey, somebody who doesn't speak Chinese try to write a letter to me. It might be important. So that's when I'll try and force myself to write Chinese characters. And it takes hours mostly. <laughs> so if you want to learn Chinese writing characters, you know, it's doable. The thing to remember is characters are written from top to bottom, left to right. That's all I can say for now. And eventually, in the course, we're going to share with you some other resources that help you learn Chinese, uh, writing Chinese characters, all right? And if you need them sooner, remember, uh, the channels of dialogue and communication are open. Please reach out to me or reach out to any of the admins, and then we'll facilitate that for you because these resources are online. So it's just a matter of knowing where to go and where to download maybe some pamphlets, or not really pamphlets, but, uh, PDF points that you can print out and then start writing characters on them. I forgot the name, but they, they will have a sort of a blueprint blue where you, you, you every stroke of the character will have to land on. Okay, so who cool. touch on that? We did a little bit of introduction to Chinese characters, all right? Now, as we mentioned earlier, picture backgrounds. Some of these characters come from picture backgrounds, and some of these characters come from being made from words like one word in Chinese merged with another word in Chinese, right? 
and the other one is of course um, the issue of tones that's what we touched on now to put all these together we got to show you three videos and these videos are made by a very very good and bright person uh, he, he just goes by the name rice pirate uh, originally he is Chinese Canadian all right so he, he speaks English very well he moved from China when he was 10 years old I was looking up his uh, background because he made three videos and he stopped but his videos are so succinct very short and straight to the point and very funny he has so much humor right uh so don't feel offended when <laughs> you see anything or when he uses a lot of those uh sort of mockery kind of tone he will be doing it for fun and he uses this funny thick sort of chinese accent it's chinese accent of speaking english but it's fake in the sense that you know he's canadian he's been in canada since he was in 10 or 11 years so he actually knows to speak English without, you know, using those, <laughs> using the, mimicking the Chinese kind of tone. Um, but he did it for fun. I think that's what his goal. So please, now let's start with the one which has to do with uh, uh, how Chinese characters come about from pictures, all right? And I'm just going to pull up the video for you just now. Um, it's right over here because it's not working. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, there we go. Okay, USA, it's time to close your big stupid mouth and open your big America stupid eye. It's time to learn the Chinese. This is number three, the Chinese pickle game. Pick, pickle game. Pick it. In the Chinese language, the word in the writing is a character. In the sum character is a pickle game. Pick the pickle game. It's a character that come from the picture drawing. Now this make a Chinese so easy, like a matter portion of America SAT, okay? For example, Ko It's a mouth, look just like the mouth, it's a wide open like you eat a hamburger pizza. San It's a mountain, you see? Every mountain in the world look just like this. So simple, okay? Like this one. Long Aya is a dragon! You big America eye! How you know see? It's an easy PC Japanese silver! Okay, enough example! Now we play review fun time game! Guess what this is? Wrong is a person! Now guess wrong is mean big! Now you know person and a big! So what this one? No wrong is a sky! How you know this sky is right there! Like you know even try! Langway! Okay, okay! I give her last one. This a bonus round, okay? What is this word? Kaiwanshao! This is not even a tiny! This is a Naruto! Hiya! Total score! B minus! You fail! <laughs> <laughs> oh my word, you know, I never stopped laughing okay. at this guy. Uh, it's, it's really fun. Okay, but from that from that video, you already saw the, the character for person, the character for big, and the character for sky, right? and, and they're just somewhat related. And that, that's the picture I was trying to paint from the video. Like, some of these really look like pictures. So that's where they they brought them up from. So you don't you don't really ever worry about Chinese alphabet. Worrying about what is it that we need to learn from it. Okay, so that's the first one. Now let's look at the other one. This one is merging two words, right? And watch how he explains it again in a funny way. Okay, everybody on time. Back now for learning the Chinese. So put down your milkshake ice creams. It's the time to learn to speak the Chinese. Lesson number two. Word and character. Chinese have the many words in the vocabulary. Each character is a word, and some word is a many word in one word. For example, Huo, Che, Huo, Che, Dian, Nao, Dian Nao, Bing, Xiang, Bing Xiang. We reiterate it's a stupid nonsense. Who make this word? Oh, no, da, it's America, USA. 
it is also important for you to know some good word together mean a very bad word. For example, 白吃白吃三八三八笨蛋笨蛋 That's you. You a dumb egg. Now, some word in the Chinese is a phonetic word, so no literal meaning. It's just for sound to help us remember. For example, 三明治 It's a sandwich. 可口可乐 It's a Coca Cola. 汉堡 That's a hamburger. Speaking of hamburger, it's a bit of whole meaning. I'm sure you're very hungry, America. Huh. So this is finish of lesson two, word and character. Now use your lazy American head and learn to speak the Chinese. Chinese. <laughs> okay, so that was another one.、Um, that was she explained these how were these words are merged together, right? And、um, it's, it's a very hilarious way that he puts it up together. You, you, and you saw fire in the last video, and he used fire again this time, but he merged fire with car, and now a fire vehicle. Not not just that's just the word for train. And he used that with、um, electricity, dian, and brain now, dian now, and electrical brain as your computer. You see how these characters come together, and so you can actually have fun learning Chinese. You know, just thinking on those little tidbits that you you will encounter along the way in this course. Okay, so real quick, we're not really going to touch on words per se. We're not really going to do character course in this course. No. And we're not really going to touch on vocabulary per se. No, we're going to give you tidbits on how you can work with the vocabulary, how you can build your vocabulary. Right? In most instances, and this happens a lot of time, there's a textbook and the pre-written、uh, uh, dialogues in there, and then you have to read these dialogues, you know, sort of to get the hang of、um, what they're saying. Right? But what if you could also get the hang of putting your thoughts together and come up with your own dialogue? That's what we want to be trying to do in this in this course as well as so that we get up to speed real quick. All right. So finally, let's talk about tones, right?、Uh, again, just to give you a quick preview, there are four tones in Chinese,、um, and these tones are very popular. Like the first one, second, and third, and 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 the and and the fourth one. And then there's a neutral one, which is the fifth one, and it's you don't really need to worry about that. You will never see a tone marker on the character when 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 it's a fifth one or when it's a neutral tone. All right. So let's watch this video, and it's the last one that I thought I want to show it with you, with you today、uh, about tones. All right. So let's go. Okay, for all you lazy American people, it's about time you learn to speak the Chinese. So I keep it very simple for you. Number one, most important when speaking the Chinese, tone. You must remember the tone when speaking the Chinese. There are four major tones and one more. Tone number one, stay on the same level of sound, like when people die at hospital. Beep, you know. For example, ma, la, ku, ko. Tone number two. Only go up like horny American man ding dong. For example, 球油铜 The third tone go down and up like dead body in river like this. 你好丑 And fourth tone just go down like your mama sound like this. 怕木漏 There is a five tone too. He is a neutral sound like one tone but shorter. 好吧吃饱了你是白鬼吗 Now one word sound the same to lazy American, but tone make a different. For example, ma is not just ma like you say. Hey ma, bring me hamburger and American French fry. For us, how you say it means different word. Ma, 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 ma. In one phrase, it sound like this. 你敢骂我妈的妈妈 Now be careful what you say. 你敢骂 is not 你干嘛 Or even, ni gan ma. Okay, that is all for lesson one. The five tone. Use your lazy American head and learn to speak the Chinese. Awesome, <laughs> right, Spider? Always bringing up the heat. So lovely、uh, introduction into the tones, and I'll, I'll 
pre, uh, ultimately to the whole Chinese language, okay, as a, as a whole. So that's what we thought we would share with you in this introduction video. But let's get the ground running, okay? We're going to pull up the slide that we're working with last time. And we're just going to skip through some of these sections because we've already covered them. The Chinese from pictures, Chinese from combined words, and everything about tones. So now the rest is going to begin with here. And this is why we are saying the rest starts here. Because this trick, you're going to use it for the rest of your Chinese speaking life. <laughs> uh, what do we mean by that? Um, if we say we have subject, verb, object, which is the normal English formation of other most statements or phrases or sentences. He likes apples, right? He likes apples already. He likes apples. We should be adding an S there. Um, but you get the point. We have the subject, which is he, and we have the object, which is apples, and the verb is to like. And in Chinese, the good news is most phrases actually mimic the same formation or sentence construction. So that means if you are armed with a number of subjects and armed with a number of verbs and a number of objects, you're good to go. You're good to go. <laughs> let's, take a look. let's take an example. Wo, that's I, right? Wo, I. And to like is si huan. Si Juan and cafe coffee, right? Wo si Juan cafe. I like coffee, right? And remember, we said in Chinese, you don't need to worry about tenses, right? So if you're on a counter, you wanna order coffee, and then like what you wanna buy, you can go wo si Juan cafe, and then they bring you coffee. And if somebody asks you somewhere else, <laughs> they ask you what you like, and you can go wo si Juan cafe. You will not get coffee at that instance, but people will still get the sense that you're not, not ordering. You see, we use the word like to order, and we use the word like to express what is our preference, right? Between coffee and tea, what you like. Also, one cafe. Okay? So, you see, with, with just those three words, we can use them in every context that we, that's possible and get away with it. Also, one, I like, and then you can put any object that you want everywhere. And sometimes your object can actually be a subject as well. For example, ta, ta can be her or si or him. Wo, that's I again. Renshi, to know. Bu, we touched on bu last time, right? Bu renshi. But you were wondering, why is it that last time it was falling and this time it's raising up a little bit? Don't worry, we'll touch on that in the future. But for now, remember, renshi. To know somebody, parents not to know. So do you know Lydia? Hmm. Or I, parents don't know. Ta her, I don't know her. Or parents ta, parents ta. So ta in this case is actually a subject, but it's listed on the object, right? And we can use ta as a subject. Ta as in she or him or her or it. Ta zhu tai to live at. Zhu to live. Tai at. Zhu tai live at. Niu yu. Niu. Okay? So ta zhu tai. She lives at. Or in this case, you could say she lives in. Alright? New York. Niu yu. Niu yu. It states kind of says the same thing. Niu yu. It's New York. Ta zhu tai. Niu yu. So we using the word to to leave and again our subject which was our object and this case ta is coming in the front so now we're using places as objects okay we used food as place as objects we used him or her people as objects we used places as objects so as long as we have a list of sufficient words uh, in terms of objects we can construct anything we want well i need ooh Sounds like love. I love me, you, and wo. That's me, right? Or I. So I love you. Wo. I. Ni. Look at that. You can actually now get going. Propose your loved one. <laughs> cool. So we can do anything we want with this same formation. Tamen tai suasu hanyu. Okay. And this instant, and this instant tai is in the front, but the verb is there is suasu to learn. Tamen is a plural marker. We still have ta, which is him or her. But when you say tamen, we're saying we now have many people. So tamen, uh, they, so es, 
uh, learning okay we are having our learning because of that tie there eh? we'll touch on that in the future but just watch what we're doing there eh? subject verb object and our object in this case is hanyu which is the chinese language if it was english would go with being you which is english language okay and speaking of english wo hui so in you and our verb there is so to speak so to speak in you so han you speak chinese so in you speak english so es han you learn chinese so es in you learn english okay wo so wo hui so wo so wo hui so in you okay so you see it's the same thing that we're doing all the way down to, to where we are uh, to where this problem but you get the point we just need to get the verbs co correct the verb for he for i is and to be is shu wo shi wo shi i am or i to be wo shi zhongguo ren zhongguo is china zhongguo ren a person from china wo shi zhongguo ren i am a chinese person or i am chinese wo shi zhongguo ren okay wo xiang kan xiang kan dian shi Again, our object in this instance is TV, Dian Shi. And Xiang Kan, Xiang Kan, want to see or Kan, to watch or to see. Xiang, to want. So Xiang, want and Kan, to see. So we have two verbs in the middle, want and see, or want and watch combined together, want to see or want to watch. 我想看电视,我想看 Dianying, or Xiangkan. You can put anything that you want to watch there or you want to see, all right? Even if you're visiting people, you can actually say, I want to see Wo Xiangkan, uh, Rocio, and, and that you'll get away with that in that case as well. Ni Zhao, Lina. Okay, Zhao is the verb to be called. Okay, Wo Zhao, I am called, and then I can say my name. Ni Zhao, you are called, and then you can say your name. So, Ni Zhao, Lina. You are called Lina. Okay, so take a note. Uh, take a screenshot of this one. Um, write it down if you need, if you have to. But here is your homework. This is what you're gonna have to do. From the words from HSK number one, and this is really important. Please follow along because we, these assignments are what's are gonna what how what's gonna help you. <laughs> you know, bring have a powerful vocabulary and and that we, and with that vocabulary we will be able to build on this imagine if we didn't know the word to like imagine if we didn't know the word to leave imagine if we didn't know the word to watch we wouldn't be able to say what all the phrases that we've just said so you need to get those vocabulary up in place but you're not you're now not just going to follow you know the, the recordings and then and then just say okay i know this word no your exercise should you choose to accept it is Make a list or a table of three columns. The first one will be the subject, the second one will be the verb, and the third one will be object. Okay. For now, that's what we need you to do. We don't need you to construct sentences, but if you can, please go ahead and do that. But we don't want to burden you with so much work to do in the first instances, all right? But please go ahead and do create a table of a list, subjects, verbs, an object okay please go ahead and do that and finally as you conclude what else can you do to help you quickly get the most of your Chinese learning okay in this journey you will need flashcards so if you're a techie person there are some apps that helps you do that there's Anki and Anki is a very popular flashcard application please get the Anki and, and, and familiarize yourself with it you can create your own flashcards you can even import them from other apps like Treco, okay. Apart from Anki, you can also look up uh, Chinese flashcards on the internet. You can either be referred to a digital resource, an application, or a downloadable resources that you can also make hard copies of. So these are two options. The third one will be making your own flashcards using paper. You can cut off the scissors, a cardboard boxes, and then write on them which is more effective because you'll be learning to write and you know your senses will be cooperating together your your eyes are seen your hands are coordinating to write it up and and it makes it easier for you uh it's a lot more easier for you to remember right so if you want to go the traditional way of paper cards please do that it's still effective right 
So that's enough for our flashcards. Now let's touch on dictionary and applications, alright? Which dictionary should you have in your phone or your mobile device as you learn in Chinese, alright? The most popular one is Pleco and the second one is Hanping, alright? These are the most used dictionaries in Chinese. They have both the paid version and the free version, but most of us get along just well with the free version. They have everything we need to survive and learn Chinese. So go ahead and look up Pleco if you don't already have it and uh, uh, in Hanping. You can, you know, download them both, compare which one would you prefer, or you can just go with one. I'm sure you survive with one as well. Okay? <laughs> I have two devices or both Android, so I put one each in the other phone. So yeah, whenever I'm with another phone, I can just use whatever is at hand, is at hand. So, and I, I feel that they both uh, do the job pretty, pretty well. Okay, except that some has some other extra features that sometimes you might not, not even use or know that exists. <laughs> um, okay, so enough about dictionaries. Other applications that you might need: Chinese skill. Chinese skill is a good application if you are starting from scratch. Okay, it takes you through the dialogues, it t trains you everything about characters, writing characters, speaking them. It, it actually gives you portions where you can actually say something and then it compares with the native speaker and check if your pronunciation is correct. So Chinese skill is up to go. It locks other versions, um, uh, other levels in the in, in I heard of you. Okay? <laughs> so that's what makes it boring if you already know Chinese because you have to start uh, from scratch. But if you study from scratch, this is a very good app. It's better than Duolingo in that sense that it, you know, continues upgrading your level and tests you on several issues. But Duolingo is a very good competitor, very popular, very friendly. And I like Duolingo, especially in learning other languages. So I, I'm sure it will do the same in Chinese. I didn't use it in Chinese myself um, since, you know, like Chinese skill, they, they, I just tried them a little bit. But I am very sure I can recommend these two applications if you're starting from scratch, Chinese skill or Duolingo, all right? And then the next thing that we will need, especially if you're learning the Chinese, to, if you're in a Chinese congregation um, and you are concerned about building characters as well, there's an app called Three Lines. Um, they used to have a, an ops, a website, threelines.org. It's still there actually. You can download the app from there. They used to download, they used to create these three lines. What, what Three Lines means is there is a character version of Chinese, right? The popular one. And there's an English translation of that Chinese uh, character. And there's a pinyin version of that Chinese character. So when you put these two together, the character, its pinyin rendition, and its English translation, you get those three lines. What three lines does for you, you can toggle it so that it shows you through two lines or one line. So if you're confident with your Chinese, you can continue opening EPUB. It opens EPUB. Please watch. It's an EPUB reader. So you download your JW uh, publication in EPUB. And then you open it using three lines. And then it gives you the option to either keep it as that or add another line, which means you can get the pinyin version and test yourself if you can figure out what they're saying in English. But if you're a beginner, you can toggle to show you all the three lines so that you see the character, you see the opinion rendition and the English translation together. Okay, so that's enough about three lines. Um, If you want to know why is it that they're no longer translating on the website, it's because they were storing their publications on their site and that's not uh, in according to the user terms, right? So they decided they'll just make a reader, you download the reader, you download the publication and then you just open the app. So that way they still continue helping us in uh, the Chinese field and we thank them dearly. And there's Pinina. Pinina is not made for witnesses, but it does pretty much what three lines does. The beauty of Pinina is it's not an EPUB reader. It actually listens to your phone, right? Whenever you copy a Chinese character, it pops up with three lines for you. So you can tap on it and then you can see what it means uh, in Chinese or what you can see what it means in uh, rather how to read it in pinyin okay so when you're using a, a your jw library app you don't want to download an epub file you can download pinyin along with jw library app you download your publications in chinese they will be in character, chinese characters there won't be pinyin on the in the application if there's pinyin in on the jw website but not in the application uh, from what i know at the moment so um, I know uh, maybe in the future they will have, but for now what you can do is if you have that and you want to test yourself in the knowledge of Chinese characters, 
you download Pinina, you copy your characters and Pinina will pop up and show you what it means or how to read it in Pinina. Okay, so enough about dictionaries and applications. Finally, we want to talk, touch on activities and podcasts. Sorry, I'm just going to catch a bit. <coughs> Podcast. If you don't have podcast, uh, try audio recordings on the website. There are audio recordings in Chinese. Uh, listen to them whenever you can. What what we mean by podcast and audio recordings? The benefit is not just being able to understand what they're saying, but also just be getting used to the sound. <laughs> that sound is good for your brain when you're learning Chinese, even if you can't really get what they're saying. You get what I'm saying. So please get podcasts, get audio recordings, listen to them on the way. Movies and music. I, 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 my Spanish teacher is telling me to, do, to invest more time in movies and, and music. The reason is because I can't go to a Spanish-speaking country at the moment, right? So in order to create my own environment that is Spanish in it, I, I, I get to do media files. So it's the same with Chinese. Get yourself used to podcasts. Um, if you need one, I can recommend some. I think Chinese podcasts, and that I know Chinese pod is one of them. Uh, it's a very good one. We'll also be sharing some of the podcasts during the, the during the lectures. And there are some v beautiful videos of these le lectures on YouTube. I will be sharing some of them as well as we go because there's no point of you know doing a recording of the same thing that somebody covered pretty well <laughs> we just share the link to what they did right and and that will help us a lot and there's some other websites that we have so many resources i i think that's what i've been spending much of my time doing lately just browsing through resources seeing what's useful for this course what's not useful for this course and some of the things that i thought i would really use will recommend them for you uh, as we go Okay, but please uh, try and see if you can get to some music and some audio recordings. If you need some recommendations, we can do that for you. All right, but finally, we save the best for last. Daily schedule. <laughs> oh, let's go back. Daily schedule. Um, this is very important, and I don't know why I'm so excited about it. <laughs> it shouldn't be, but I am. Okay, fine. Let's let's say this. Okay, you have to have a daily schedule. <laughs> Sorry. From for laughing, I'm not sure why I'm excited, but please have a daily schedule, okay? Um, do something uh, uh, Chinese every day. Uh, set yourself some time. If you're a morning person, in the morning, if you're reading your daily text, if you want to read your daily text in Chinese, challenge yourself in that way. Cool. If you want to, you know, listen to your podcast in the morning, if you want to check whatever you can do, please do that. We'll be sending you assignments. Some assignments are being sent to you already. Some of you have uh, reached out to me and told, showed me how uh, where you want to go with the language, and, and you know I've been sending some things for you to to do already. Please do that every day. So you're gonna get class assignments. You're gonna get personal assignments. Work on those. Please work on those. Okay. <laughs> I can't overemphasize this. You will not progress, and this crash course won't be a crash course without a daily schedule. And what we mean by that is, don't rest. Okay. Work as hard as you can. It's only gonna be for a month, but this month will cover you a lot of trouble. All right. So please, please, please make a daily schedule and stick to it, because it's one thing coming up with a schedule and another following it so at least 10 minutes i would recommend at least 10 minutes um people recommend seven minutes some 15 but i'm just gonna go 10 minutes okay at least 10 minutes do something in chinese okay if you don't have an assignment get one on you know you just find something to do with chinese if you want to me if you want you can also reach out to me directly and then i would suggest something that you can do if you're not happy with that feel free to come back and say okay I, I saw what you recommended, but it's not exactly what I want. Okay, can we tweak it a little bit more? And you know, you know, until we get to exactly where you are, because seriously, I don't want to lie to you. We are all in the same basket, but we are different in a way. Some of you are visual learners. Some of you are in word learners. Some of you are um, just natural <laughs> language learners. All right, so. If we say we will treat each and every one the same way, we will not be able to benefit all of us in the same way. So please communicate with me and let's tweak these lectures to your liking, right? So we're going to have live sessions, as we mentioned, every Saturday, 5 a.m. California time. 
um, those live sessions will help us come about and change ourselves and see how good we are, our, our Chinese is improving. So we're going to have four live sessions, that's what it means, because we will start next Saturday and at the remainder of the Saturdays during the rest of the month. But in between, assignments will be coming your way, resources will be coming your way. Invest as much time as you can because it's only for a month, all right? But that month can benefit you a lot in terms of what you can achieve in Chinese because all these things will come together in short term and you know how to push them together. And like when you learn something useful this month and then you learn another next month, but you can't piece them together. But this time around, we want to try and squeeze it all and make it come together and jelly in together and see what really comes out of it. You know, it's just like flour. So you see flour this week and you start baking and then next next week you see eggs and and then you 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 use it you use them for another dish and then the other one you see vanilla essence you you won't really think of making a cake right but when you see them all together ah a cake sounds like it comes out of it so that's what we want to try and do uh put all the grammar things the vocabulary and everything else together and um see how you can use them and after that you you will see that you gain more confidence of speaking in chinese and even thinking in chinese like this word in chinese is this word okay so in that note that's what we want to choose to conclude on share your day okay when you wake up let us know you are up okay uh look for the word i just woke up okay and then we'll correct you from there do an audio of that if you have a partner, and this is another thing that we want to overemphasize, if you have somebody within your time zone, partner up, all right? What are you doing today? Hey, your usual conversation, but just change it to Chinese. Just the first few lines. Hi, hi, how are you? How are you today? What's up for today? I'm going to go to the gym, and then I'll be back and wash up, and then maybe go to work. Ah, oh, fantastic. I'm going to be at home looking out for the kid. That Those few lines, say them in Chinese. Find how to say them in Chinese. And... If you don't know how to find them in Chinese, just, you know, do up the dialogue in English, post it up to the group, we'll help each other translate it, okay? So this group, we want it to be, to have as much traffic that much of us will just press on the mute notification so that, you know, it's, it's super busy. Please, be easy up on the group, okay? We want we to wanna let WhatsApp know that there's so much traffic going on in the group. And that traffic is you exercising your Chinese muscle. And by the end of the month, we want to see improvement, right? You, I'm, I'm sure if you've been to the gym, your coach one will say, take screenshots of, uh, sorry, they will say screenshots. They'll say, take photos of what your body looks like, right? And save them because this is your before. And afterward, they say, take photos of your workout, or maybe after two, three months, and see how much improvement have you done. If they didn't do any improvement, then they'll try and adjust. So we want to say, sort of borrow that, um, line of thought and say okay you went to an hsk level and you, you you took screenshots of where you were right but we're also going to continue uh exercising that chinese muscle but the only way we can do that is you come up and post something english or chinese right and we hope we're trying to translate it for you if you want you can continue uh you can try yourself and then send it up and then we can you know try and correct it but as we mentioned earlier there's nothing wrong with using, you, you, there are no tones, there are no uh, tones that we are going to be concerned about, and there are no uh, tenses that we are going to be concerned about. So just know the verb, just know the object, and just know the subject. That's all you need, okay? So that's it for our introductory uh, class today. Uh, it's somewhat long, but, you know, that's what introductions are meant for. So we've reached to the end of it, and... Um, we wish Jehovah's blessing in your learning, and um, I think Brazil would try and touch touch on the most important pain, points from this uh, video and share with our Chinese friends as well. But all the same, we will be continuing to learn together and we'll be in the group together, and um, and we're happy to to have you with us.